So let us start. So let me remember that uh, uh, we are considering now this, this equation here. And we are considering it in, say, in t positive and x in Rn. So uh, k, k will be will be for us essentially always positive. Um, so this is the heat equation. And we are trying to look for some special solution, for instance, starting with dimension 1, space dimension 1. So we look for special solutions. We have already observed that uh, x squared over t is a nice scaling, because here we have just one derivative in t and two derivative in space. So, uh, this 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 is natural parabolic scaling, so called, and uh, therefore we we yesterday we have defined the function maybe capital U if I remember correctly, and then of a vari variable psi. So where psi is exactly this by definition, and maybe divided by some. Um, t to the alpha, um, and we have taken alpha equal mi minus, and we take alpha equal minus one over two, so this is essentially one over square root of t, capital U of xi. I hope that this were the denotation, the notation of yesterday. Hmm? Okay. So we look for solutions, capital U, so that, uh, so we look for U, capital U, so that uh, 1 over square root of T, T is positive, uh, capital U uh, of X square over T solves our PD. Okay, and so uh, what do we have to do? We uh, so let me call this maybe u. So u t. We insert now this um, ansatz inside the PD, and we look for an equation on capital U, which is the advantage. The capital U is a function of just one variable only. Hmm? And so this is a way to reduce our PD to an ODE, actually. OK? So this is uh, minus t over minus t to the minus 3 half, 1 half. So minus one half t to the minus three half u of psi plus u prime of psi psi t, uh, and therefore it is equal to minus one half t the minus 3 half u psi plus so psi t is equal to um, this is psi so we have um, t to the minus t to the minus 2 x square hmm? 
And so this is equal to uh, 1 over square root of t uh, times uh, t to the minus 2. Then we have x square. And then we have u prime of psi. Now, uh, t to the minus 3 half. So let me, uh, let me now uh, isolate a, a t to the minus 3 half here. So I have minus 1 over 2, t to the minus 3 half, u, psi minus t to the minus 3 half. So if I, if I make some mistakes, please uh, correct me. Um, x squared over t u prime of psi. And so this is actually psi again. OK? So this is psi again. So let me write it to the minus 3 half u psi minus t to the minus 3 half psi u prime of psi. OK. Next, uh, we have u xx. So u xx, if this is u, u xx is 1 over square root of t. And then I have, I think, uh, so ux, what is ux, is 1 over square root of t, then u prime of psi. And then let me re recall what well, is psi x. This is 2x over t. Hmm? Uh, so this is 2x over t. OK. Uh, and then uxx is equal to 2 over square root of t. And then we have u second of psi multiplied by x squared over t squared plus 2 over square root of t, u prime of psi over t. Huh? So let me again, uh, let me again isolate, uh, no, OK. Uh, let me, yes, yeah, let me again isolate uh, 2 over t 3 half. And then we have. Um, by the way, we are in one space dimension. So sorry, this x squared is exactly the modulus of x squared. Huh? OK. OK, so one space dimension. So this is um, 2 t to the 3 half. Then we have uh, u second. And then again, psi, I think. And then we have 2 t to the 3 half uh, u prime of psi. OK. So please check the computations if there are mistakes or not. So now we have this is ut, and this is uxx. And therefore, this is equal, this left-hand side is exactly equal to, so uh, minus 1 over 2 t to the 3 half u minus 1 over t to the 3 half u prime. And this is ut, OK? 
this is ut. And then we have, so let me put maybe 1 over t to the 3 half everywhere here. So this is this, this. 1 over t. Huh? And then let me put maybe also a minus outside. So we have a plus here, plus here. And when we have plus 2k u second, plus, thanks, 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 2k xi u second. Ah, there is, a, there is a xi also here, thank you. 2k xi use 2k xi u second plus 2k u prime. 2k u prime. Okay. 2k, let me check. So we have a 2. So let me check. So the derivative, the time derivative. Huh? There is? This? Yes. I checked, I have to check this. Huh? So this. Huh? Two psi. Uh, is four. Uh, it is four. Uxx, it is four. This is actually four. So this is a four. Thank you. Hmm? So that is a 4. This means that here there is a 4. OK. So let me check if the computations are wrong or correct. So ut is equal minus 1 half. Uh, this is minus t. I have a minus 1 half here, apparently, also in my notes. Uh, so ut is this, xi t, there is not minus 1 half here. So there is no minus 1 half here, t to the minus 1 half. Apparently, I have, in my computations, I have minus 1 half there, and u second. And u x x u prime u x x one over square root of t and four. So at the end, uh, let me put outside. <coughs> there is a four here. One half u. This is okay. <clears throat> this is apparently wrong. U prime psi. So <clears throat> I have. Are these computations correct? Let me check. Ah, no, 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 no. This is this is this. Is, the, the point is that. Uh, the point is that I made, I make this this uh, this change of variable. Sorry, let, let me repeat. So I take this u. I take this of x over square root of t instead of x square. So let, let me take this. Sorry, sorry. This is this is xi, and this is u of t x. Let me do this. Otherwise, we have too many terms. So it is uh, previous. This is still the parabolic scaling, but we don't need the square. OK? So uh, let me compute again once more. Now it should be correct. So ut, ut is therefore equal minus 1 over t to the 3 half, 1 half, and then u plus 1 over square root of t u prime 
uh, of xi, xi, and this is xi t. Now, so xi t, uh, so this is correct, but now xi t is slightly different. So xi t, if this is the new xi, xi t is equal to minus 1 over t to the 3 half uh, x. Hmm? So this, is the, this remains the same. And this is uh, u prime. So let me correct this. Huh? So let me correct this. It is simpler, actually. OK. Uh, u prime 1 over square root of t, t to the 3 half, 1 over square root of t, x. Is it correct now? Hmm? And so we can continue. This we will write as before, u of psi. And then we isolate, we isolate again uh, as before, 1 over t to the 3 half. And, we have, and it, what remains is x over t, over square root of t. So what remains here is x over square root of t. And x over square root of t is the new psi. So we have this. And this is now correct. So now ux should be actually much simpler because we don't have x squared. So that, that was the, so what is ux? ux is uh, ux is equal to 1 over t. Uh, now, u prime of x over square root of t. And uxx actually is simpler. That was the point. So now, this is simple. It is uh, 1 minus, uh, it is 1 over t to the 3 half u second of xi. Do you agree? OK, fine. Now let us see if now finally uh, we end up with the correct conclusions. So let me rewrite the left hand side. So the left hand side is what? So let me put 1 over t to the 3 half in front of everything. UTT is, and let me put also a minus as before. So UTT is equal to 1 half U, which is this. Then we have plus 1 half psi u prime. And then we have here a k. And then we have u second. OK. And this is the, if I'm not wrong now, is the x so k u second with the minus. And then we have this and this. Do you agree? Is it OK? okay. OK. So OK. So this must be equal to 0. And therefore, we are looking for capital U solving t is positive k u second plus 1 half. And then you, you recognize that here there is the derivative of psi u with respect to psi. Hmm? OK? Because this is clearly, OK, it's, it's just uh, the derivative. Fine. This says that k 
u prime plus one half psi u must be a constant. Hmm? Can you follow the computations? Sorry? This? This one? Next. This one? T square, right? Uh, why? No, no, it's, it's T over 2, U over 2. Hmm? OK. So please, please copy. And so we have this. Now, let us look at this uh, expression. Let us look at this expression. This is invariant under the change xi into minus xi. OK? So this is invariant under the change xi into minus xi. And therefore, well, we look for actually an even solution, u. Hmm? In particular, we look for some solution u which satisfies this. Hmm? Because of this uh, argument of invariance under this, uh, this change. This says to us that if you look for solutions to this with this further condition, then this constant is 0. Hmm? Because if, if we take psi equal to 0 here, uh, constant equal to the value at, at psi equal to 0. But then psi equal to 0, we look for a solution so that this is, this is 0. And then u prime is 0 by our new assumption. So the constant must be equal to 0. And therefore, we have k, we have u prime plus 1 over 2 k psi u equals 0. OK? OK, and then we, we therefore, we, we find the capital U, which must be equal to some constant. Let me call this C. And then we have an exponential of, uh, mi uh, of minus, say, psi squared over 4K, maybe. Hmm? So you can check that, of course, u prime is equal to u uh, is this, OK? OK, so and this is u is, is smooth, is even, smooth, and bounded, as you can see. Fine, because now, at least in one space dimension, now let, let me recall who is the, which is the relations between u. u of tx was defined as 1 over square root of t, capital U of psi. Oh, and this was the new psi, say. And therefore, uh, we find, we have found the solution u of tx equals some constant c divided by square root of t and then e to the minus uh, x square over 4k t. OK, and t was positive.
and this was this was the result for for, a, for some constants for any constants now notice that by the way uh, we have not really used the positivity of k in this discussion. We, d we have not used. We have used it here. Uh, solving this equation. No, I mean k, k is non-zero, of course. K is non-zero. Huh? Positivity, I think we use it here. Why do you think so? I mean, no, ah, yes, yes, no we, we have, we have yes, yes, yes. just non-zero. But of course, if k is 0, this is an, a trivial PD. OK? So we can assume that k is non-zero. However, k positive says that this is actually a decree. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, going, it's, it's uh, going to 0 rapidly as, uh, as uh, xi goes to infinity. On the other hand, if k, say, is minus 1, then this is actually blowing up at infinity. Hmm? So if we are looking for solution in some special classes, for instance, uh, it, it is natural to, to, to take now k positive. But by the way, for the moment, this is true also for k negative. <coughs> hmm? OK, this is. So, so now, uh, let me let me give give you an exercise. Home work. So, uh, the, so, 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 the, so, so let us first give you the give you the following definition. So, now let n bigger or equal than one, t bigger or equal than zero x in Rn, and the fine, I need some uh, symbol. Uh, let me call this phi, maybe t of x uh, is equal to uh, some constant that I will specify, some constant that we will specify in a minute. OK, let me, let me specify it. OK, some constant t over n over 2 e to the minus x squared. So let, let me also normalize things. Otherwise, uh, so, 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 so let me, let me for, from now on, take k equal 1. So k now is 1. And so here there is 40. So if t is positive, x in our n. And then uh, if t is equal to 0, uh, let me define it 0 if uh, t is equal to 0, uh, x in our n, and say tx different from the origin, just to. Okay, just, just maybe we can also, if we are, well, this maybe is not useful, but we can also well, extend this also for negative times. So C is a specific constant. I think that C is, uh, C is, uh, 1 over 4 pi to the n over 2. Uh, and uh, this is called the fundamental solution. Of the heat equation. Equation. Now. The homework consists in the following. So we have checked that this, for positive times, 
is a solution of our PD in dimension 1, when n is equal 1. So remember that here we have square root of t. So this corresponds to n equal 1 here. This is just a definition. No, this is solution of this. No, what, what, so, so let, 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 me, let me, so, uh, so what we have done in the previous computation is that when n is equal to 1, n is equal to 1 means here you have square root of t, this solves our PD. This is a solution, OK? by the previous computation. This is an explicit solution in this half space. Hmm? Now, the homework consists in checking that still in the half space, in the positive half space, check that phi solves ut minus Laplace of u equal to 0 in 0 plus infinity times Rn. So check that this is still a solution in any dimension. OK? In any dimension. The difference here is, is this factor, n over 2. Hmm? OK, so now. The, um, Why the constant is exactly 1 over 4 pi over? Okay, actually, any constant is okay. Now we, we, uh, we, we try to see why we need exactly this constant. Any constant would be okay. But this is just for a normalization reason. And normalizing we, are, we, are, we are normalizing to area equal to 1. Uh, the, the kern, this, uh, this, this object here, so that its integral in, in space is always equal to 1. So uh, um, <coughs> let me. <coughs> let me do this computation so that. I try to justify. So let me compute the integral over Rn of e to the minus x squared over 40 dx. Huh? So we make the following change of variable, y equal to x over 2 uh, square root of t. Hmm? OK. Huh? So that this, with this change of variable, becomes exactly what? Becomes e to the minus y squared. <coughs> then we have uh, maybe 2 to the n, t to the n over 2. Mm -hmm. So please check again the computations. So the y mm -hmm. now this is two to the n <coughs> t to the n over two product from one to n. So <coughs> okay. So and we know what is this, right? We know, we know how to compute this, right? So so let, let me compute it now. The, 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 this quantity is here e to the minus s square ds. I compute it to the square, which is equal to e to the minus 
S square plus sigma square ds d sigma. So we, we do this uh, we do this in uh, in polar coordinates. Okay, so this is equal to uh, integral between zero and plus infinity. Then we have two pi, and then we have uh, rho e to the minus rho square d rho. Huh? Uh, and uh, this is actually we can do this so this is uh, 2 pi and then we have I think 1 half 1 half because the primitive is uh, uh, 1 half e to the minus rho square between 0 and plus infinity. Minus. OK. So this is pi. Huh? Hence, this object is square root of pi. And therefore, let, let us check the computations 2 to the n t to the n over 2, pi to the n over 2. Hmm? Pi to the n over 2, this means that, uh, uh, let us see. Ah, OK, so this is exactly 1 over 2 to the n, pi over n, or n over 2. Hmm? And so you see that now if I, if, I, if I take, so this implies that 1 over 4 pi t to the n over 2 integral over n over 4t in the x, this is exactly equal to to 1, to 1. Hmm? This is the reason for the choice of the constant, just a normalization reason. So with this choice, this is <coughs> a kernel in the sense that the area for any time if you compute the integral in space of this quantity with this choice of c, c this is always equal to 1. Hmm? This is the reason for the constant. Okay. Now, hmm? is it OK? So now. <coughs> Let us try to, to understand some properties of this function phi, which is actually the first example of a non-trivial solution, at least for positive times. So let us, uh, let us let us do this. So <clears throat> try to depict the graph. So here we have, say, time. Here we have space. So maybe we can put time here. And <coughs> space here. First of all, what happens to our function? So this is x equal to 0. 
this half line here is x, is x equal to 0. So what happens here? What do we see here? Well, we have a sort of profile in this plane, in this uh, plane containing this uh, line x equal to 0 and this vertical line, there is 1 over square root of t. Huh? <clears throat> because you, you, we put equal, uh, x equal to 0 here. And so uh, apart from this constant c, which in one dimension is 1 over 2 pi square root and so on, so let, let me for the moment forget about this constant, take it equal to 1, n is equal to 1 in this picture. So here there is a profile which is 1 over square root of t. So w what we see here is something like uh, sort of function like this. <clears throat> so if you if we take <clears throat> a movie namely we cut this graph at different times huh? what we see is something like this huh? some time then as, as time goes towards zero we see something like this And we have normalized things so that the area below this graph is always equal to 1. Always equal to 1. <clears throat> OK? So this is essentially the graph of the function uh, phi. Uh, only in one space dimension, of course. We cannot draw it in two space dimensions. Hmm? <clears throat> so now, what about smoothness of, of this function? So remark, well, it is clear that phi is always positive if t is positive. Then, for convenience, we have defined it equal to 0 here. By definition, so this is for positive times. At the origin, we don't have defined anything. Huh? See? But for, for, uh, for time equal to 0, so at, at, at time equal to 0, apart from the origin, apart from this point here, but here we have set the function phi equal to 0 by definition. Mm -hmm. And if, if, if one is interested to extend it also for negative times, well, one possible definition is to extend it equal to 0. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> So what about the regularity? So what, is it true that the function, for instance, here, far from the origin, but on this line, is it true that the function is smooth or not? Yes. So we have to understand a little bit this. Because this is a definition. We have to check that at least this definition is continuous here, and maybe even more. more. Hmm? So 0, 0, 0 also here, 0, 0. And here is sort of singularity. And then this is. So th this is actually our function. OK? Now, what about so the regularity? Of course, for positive times, it has <coughs> is, uh, is always strictly positive. Not only this, but 
the support of this function is non-compact, right? It, has, it doesn't have compact support. Next, phi is surely C infinity, <coughs> at least um, here. For positive times, it's surely C infinity. Actually, it is even more. It is analytic, real analytic, in 0 plus infinity times Rn. Hmm? <coughs> now, what happens here? So, so let us take, so this is t, this is x. Let us take a point x bar. <coughs> and compute the limit. Uh, so x bar is different from 0. Huh? Tx converges to 0 x bar of phi of Tx. <coughs> so we have a neighborhood here. We want to take the limit of the function phi go, uh, converging to this point, which is not the origin. Uh, and phi is 0 here, 0 here, by definition. <coughs> so look at this expression. Hmm? If t goes to 0 and x is non 0, what is this limit? <coughs> It is 0, right? It is clear? I think it's, it's quite clear. So this is equal to 0. Hmm? Not only this, but also all derivatives, <coughs> for the same reason, this kills uh, any, any negative power of times here. So phi is also, we can say that phi is also <coughs> Sorry, C infinity minus the origin. <coughs> hmm? Okay, and, and, and also, well, remember that phi of Tx dx is always equal to 1 for any positive t. OK? OK. So these are the first, the first properties that we can infer from, uh, from the explicit expression of the kernel. <coughs> Sometimes it is called kernel, this, this function, of this function phi. OK. On the other hand, at 0, there is a singularity. At, at, at this point, time equal to 0 and x equal to 0, there is a singularity. So the function is singular at that point. Okay. So now, uh, exercise. How can we compute the, the zero zero single time? Well, I mean, the function is there. For, 
obviously from the picture of the graph, the function is there. How do you say? There, is, there does not exist the limit as tx goes to 0, 0 of phi, for instance. This is clear. <coughs> OK, so uh, for any delta positive, the limit as uh, the limit as um, t goes to 0 of phi of tx is equal to 0 uniformly in x bigger or equal than delta. Exercise 1, exercise 2, for any delta bigger or equal than 0, the limit is equals to 0 of the integral phi of t y dy is equal to 0. Maybe um, maybe I can leave uh, I can leave you this as homeworks. Um, do you, do you understand what does it mean this uniformly with respect to x? Is not is it clear? So the supremum over x bigger or equal than delta of this limit is going to zero. Huh? Uh, so this is a way, this, these two uh, exercises uh, say, say to you that, uh, uh, of course, uh, the, the main contribution of phi is close to the singularity point. Because you see, uh, when you go, uh, as, as t goes to 0, Phi is always zero, but far from the from, far from far from the origin. So, in some sense, uh, close to the origin, I mean, what you see for very small times is something like this. Huh? Mm -hmm. And also, this says that uh, if you look at the integral of this function phi, essentially here there is nothing. But all the contrib and remember that this must be equal to 1. For, for all positive times, this integral must be equal to 1. But this says that, uh, so uh, essentially it says that uh, all contribution to the integral as time goes to 0 is concentrated in an in a extremely small neighborhood of the origin. Hmm? No, no, it cannot be one, because I'm integrating out exactly this. I'm integrating outside the origin. So this says that it should be one. But where is it concentrated? I mean, this says that since it should be one, it is concentrated exactly. If, if you compute the integral uh, here, then you don't find anything. OK. So. Hmm? For any delta positive? Yeah, delta is small enough, but any delta is OK. Of course, if it is small, the, interest, the, the, the exercise is more interesting. <laughs> if delta is large, that is not very interesting. But in any case, it, it is true for any delta. 
Okay, so we have a strange function uh, which, uh, which has these properties. <coughs> this, this leads to, we will see, I hope, to the notion of distributions and Dirac deltas. Uh, is very close to, to that notion. So maybe, maybe uh, I can leave you this as, as exercises that we will do the next time. OK? So don't worry if you are not able to do this. Well, this is easy. This is not so easy. But try. And then we will do this together in the next lecture. OK. Now, again, in the spirit of the, of the course, we, we, can, uh, we, we don't construct solutions uh, on any domain, but, but we look for uniqueness properties of solutions. So, so let, me, let me now discuss uh, this very important issue, which is the weak maximum minimum, minimum principles on bounded domains on bounded domains so now we ha we are in the following situation essentially so we have, say, some domain. Well, let me, so this is time. This is space. And let me call this Q. Then we have some T. Hmm. Um, <coughs> my notation <coughs> my notation are the following q t are t x in q such that t is less than t huh? so we have this bounded domain q assume Qt is bounded and non empty. <clears throat> so we have sort of this is Qt. Hmm? T, Q is open and bounded. So Q is open, say. into R1 plus N. Hmm? So QT is also open, but uh, it is what is below this, uh, this time capital T here. Then let me introduce also uh, some, some other name like um, Gamma, which is this, hmm? Gamma T is Tx into Q such that T is equal to T. This is Gamma T. Q is open. And then let me enter. So gamma t is this red part. Gamma t is this red part. And then let me also introduce um, st maybe. The denotation was st maybe, yes. Uh, t x uh, into the boundary of q 
such that t is less than t. So, uh, and then for we have, so this is the boundary of Q, and so we have uh, this part here. Hmm? Yeah, low. This is gamma. In general, it's quite often the problem is studied in cylindrical domains. So in general, example, specific example, for instance, for instance, Q is the product. Q is a portion of a cylinder. So this is Q. Uh, this is t, any t, say. Mm. And this is omega, bounded domain over n. So actually, q is the product of, say, 0, some capital T, say, some big T times omega. Mm. This is the usual situation where we study parabolic problems like this, namely on portion of cylinders over omega. This is omega. <coughs> and we have this, this situation. And therefore, let us look at our, our so this is the upper part of the, of the boundary, in this case, it is just this. So this is, say, gamma t. Hmm? This is gamma t. <coughs> so we have to say q a little bit larger. So, uh, cap, uh, some s, no. So there is, this is t. This is S. So uh, gamma t is, uh, if, if we look at the times before t, gamma t is this part here, is the, uh, is the upper part uh, inside, inside the open set Q. And then S of t uh, is just, uh, <coughs> S of t is the lateral boundary, so-called lateral boundary, OK? <clears throat> OK, so it is uh, the lateral boundary of this cylinder. Eh? And uh, like this, with this bottom. Is it okay? Look at the definition. This is the definition. Okay. So, <clears throat> so it is clear that this situation is less general than this. Okay, because this is a special. This is a special situation in case of products, when Q is a product. Okay. However, this is the usual, the usual uh, setting of our problem. In any case, now, uh, theorem. So let u be a continuous function in Qt. Uh, closure, intersection, now, 
With this symbol, I mean that u has uh, one time derivative, which is continuous, and two space derivatives, which are continuous. So, one, so you see, the, the equation is this. Uh, this is the, operate, the operator. So it is natural to require to have smooth objects, classical objects. It is natural to require uh, inside the open set QT. Hmm? It's natural to require one, con one time derivative well defined and two space derivatives well defined. Hmm? So let you in this class satisfy <clears throat> ut minus Laplace of u less than or equal than 0 in qt. So this is so-called uh, smooth subsolution because there is a less than or equal, so it is not necessary a solution. It is a subsolution, and this is smooth enough. So u smooth subsolution. Ah, yes, then for simplicity, normalize things so that, so we know where k, we know where, uh, what is k, we know that k is positive, we know that in the fundamental solution it goes to the denominator, but for these arguments, for simplicity, let us take k equal to 1. Of course, everything works the same. The important is that now k is positive. Hmm? So let us k take k equal 1. Thank, thank you. So <clears throat> uh, this is a smooth subsolution. Now, the word is clear because it is less than or equal than 0. Huh? And uh, uh, smoothness we have, uh, we have by assumption. Then, so under these assumptions, then, then, the max of, so now u is continuous and q bar t is bounded. Huh? So u as assumes on the closure of qt a maximum. This is not plus infinity. Hmm? It's well defined as a maximum. And then this is equal to the max of u over the, lat the closure of the lateral boundary. So the lateral boundary was defined like this, like this. <coughs> so smooth subsolutions have the following properties. Now let me continue the statement. under all these assumptions, under, under the boundedness of QT. Eh? So in the statement, there is assume QT is bounded. Okay? This is. <coughs> Moreover, in a, furthermore, so this is called weak maximum principle, weak maximum, weak maximum principle for subsolutions, and then more, furthermore, let uh, V continuous up to the closure, and so that these are well defined, the two derivatives, one derivative, sat be such that satisfy is a smooth super solution hmm? in QT. Then
Okay, then this V is a smooth super solution, okay? In particular, so in particular, if U is a solution, solves ut minus Laplace u equal to 0, then then we have both together. So then max over q bar t of u is max over s bar t of u mean q bar t of u okay so let me let me um, summarize the statement the statement is a statement which says something about weak uh, about um, smooth subsolutions weak maximum principle and smooth super solutions weak minimum principle weak minimum principle in particular if u is at the same time a smooth subsolution and a smooth super solution namely it satisfies the equality so it is both then we have both the, the assertions Okay, so, so there is no rule of karma t. No, uh, the, the, in principle, see, yeah, there is. So this says that. Uh, thanks. Uh, yes, there is no rule of gamma t. There is actually the rule of gamma t in the sense that this theorem does not exclude. Oh, okay, remark. So remark does not it does not exclude not exclude that say uh, take take a function that take a solution u that a solution u takes is maximum maximum on gamma t or on in qt does not exclude this it just says that if you look at the value of u take a, a solution if you look at the values of u on this uh, yellow part, then there, there will be the maximum value. It is written here. For instance, for a, for a solution. But in principle, it could happen that also at some point here, you could take its maximum value or also in QT, it could take a maximum value. This is not excluded by the theorem. This is the, why the reason of the word weak. Because there is also the strong uh, maximum and minimum principle. So this is called weak maximum principle. And it does not actually, it is possible to exclude so actually, it is possible to exclude this, uh, this, the content of this remark. But this, this, this is much more difficult to do. Gamma t bar, eh? Well, qt will, because qt bar, essentially, I mean, 
No, because QT bar co contains also the lateral boundary. We cannot put the bar there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, as far now we will prove this uh, uh, if there is time. But uh, so the, the important fact is to to understand that this situation up to, up to the, for the moment is not excluded, not excluded. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so let, let me continue the remark. Maybe this can be excluded with other arguments. This can be excluded with other arguments that for the moment we, don't, we do not mm, do. OK. Say for sub solutions, uh, for yes, for sub solutions. So take T bar X bar inside QT. Have, say a point here take an intermediate time between T bar and capital T Take epsilon positive and we construct starting from U from U we construct a strict subsolution. as follows. Now we will understand what does it mean strict. So we define, define V of Tx equal to U of Tx minus epsilon T. Hmm? So epsilon is positive say that everything here is positive. Hmm? For definitiveness, T is positive, everything is positive, T bar is positive, tau is positive, just to fix ideas, like in the picture here. And uh, define this V. So that, uh, of course, uh, in, uh, say, in Q tau, tau, 
then vt satisfies as the following property vt is equal ut minus epsilon epsilon is positive laplace of v is equal laplace of u therefore vt minus laplace of v is equal to ut minus laplace of u minus epsilon hmm? so which is less than or equal than minus epsilon because this is a subsolution remember in the wall of q t this is a subsolution hmm? the assumption we are doing the proof for subsolutions okay then uh, what what is the inequality satisfied by v well this is strictly negative because epsilon is positive okay hence v is a strict subsolution in this sense eh? v in c q bar tau intersection c12 q tau is is a strict subsolution actually is also This, this, okay, is a strict subsolution. Okay, this is a strict subsolution. Uh, now, claim a maximum point. point of V cannot be on in in, in uh, Q tau union gamma tau the maximum point of V cannot be cannot lie in uh, on the upper part of the boundary here and the, in the interior. Let us check this. Claim. This is a claim. Okay. Assume by contradiction that uh, T naught X naught is a maximum point. Assume by contradiction that this is a maximum point. Uh, is a maximum. We want to find the contradiction with the, with the, with the using our strict subsolution property. So first of all, what, that, what happens at, to the Laplace of V? Uh, they, maybe this definition can be given everywhere. Hmm? OK. And this is okay, and this is also uh, okay. So, what happens to the Laplace of V at the point T naught X naught? And what happens to the derivative of V at T naught X naught? This derivative, so I'm looking 
this derivative is not necessarily 0. It is 0 if t0 is less than tau. And in principle, I'm looking at the problem inside here now. Tau, this is tau. I'm looking at the problem here. And I'm, and uh, OK, if I am inside, it is clear that this derivative is 0. Hmm? So if t0 is less than tau, here it is clear that this di time derivative is 0. But if t0 is equal to tau, then this derivative is what? Not necessarily equal to 0. It is a maximum point. So it is increasing there, bigger or equal than 0. And what about the Laplacian in general? What about the Laplacian of v at the maximum point? Do you know? It's hmm? it's Is a non-positive. Huh? Hmm? By the way, uh, the Why is difficult. Huh? Why is it? For Laplacian is less or equal to zero. At at the maximum point. At the maximum point. Well, this is uh, all the Hessian. The Hessian at the maximum point is uh, is. Uh, for Hessian, we need some uh, this theorem. It's also x e x j. Yeah. But the trace of the Hessian in particular, so the Hessian has a sign at a maximum point, at a local maximum. The Hessian has a sign, in particular the trace has a sign. Huh? So uh, this is surely non-positive, non and this is also non-negative. So in general, so in general, we conclude the, two, the, the following two properties, this. And this is always true also. t not x not bigger or equal than 0 at the maximum point. Hmm? At the maximum. Now look at this. Look at this. At the maximum point. So evaluate this at the maximum point. This must be negative. Hmm? But it is the sum of two non-negative quantities. Because this is bigger or equal than 0, and minus this is bigger or equal than 0. So we, we at, so at, so at t not x not we have a contradiction with uh, the strict subsolution property with this. OK? So we have proven our claim. Therefore, our claim is proven. OK? up to now. So uh, maybe uh, time is, is over. Mm. So <clears throat> the next, uh, maybe it is better to continue the next time, because time is over. And uh, um, so the next time we will start first by doing the two exercises that I, I left to you on the decreasing properties of the kernel of the heat equation, phi. And then we will conclude the proof of the weak maximum and minimum principles on bounded domains. OK?